Hey, how's it going guys? We are back for another episode of The Final Whistle and today I've just finished watching the England against Croatia game and this will be my match reaction. What a game it was. You could say it was boring at times, you could say it was kind of slow. I would say so. First for me, 20-25 minutes was all England, 30 minutes even. All England, all possession. Croatia kind of rode out that wave. You saw about a 30 second period where Croatia got the ball back and they kind of just stood there and they just knocked the ball around the back which was quite obvious that they needed to do to throw slow down that rhythm that England had because it looked like England was going to score early from that Phil Foden shot that just clipped the inside of the post and went straight behind Livakovic's back which I couldn't believe didn't go in all of England was shocked all of England lost it and I was really heartbroken for Phil Foden because I thought that was his moment to announce himself on the world stage and the national stage but Phil Foden was kind of quiet for me this game. I'll talk about him more a bit in depth later on, guys. But before we jump into things, hit that sub button, hit that like button, drop some comments down below. I'm loving all the positivity around the community. And if you can hit that sub button, I'd love to hit 50 subs as soon as possible. But right now, we're going to jump straight into it. And I had to say, guys, I love this game. Obviously, I'm supporting England. I have some English heritage in my family. And I'm glad to see England win this. I was not backing... Southgate what he did with this lineup personally I love that he played Phillips and he played Rice and Mount but I don't know how Sterling found his way into this team I'm not surprised Gareth Southgate obviously has his favorites but I don't I just don't see how he beats out Jack Grealish for this lineup for me Jack Grealish is phenomenal what he does creativity wise how how he brings that ass Villa side into into the Premier League and keeps them up last year what he's done this year with Aston Villa and what he did with those friendly games for England was outstanding. Everyone in England, everyone around the world thought he was going to be starting or thought he was going to be playing. And then Southgate goes with his favorites and picks Sterling. Yes, Sterling scored, but for me, he wasn't the greatest out in the pitch. Another Mad City boy for me who wasn't another great player out there, Kyle Walker. Attacking wise, you could say as a fullback for England or a right back for England, you want the attacking ability. Kyle Walker's passing was god-awful, it was piss-poor, he couldn't make a pass to save his life, and then, for me, defensive-wise, I'm I'm right back myself, and I, I look, everyone says to me, Trent, Trent Alexander-Arnold's attacking ability is unbelievable, but I say, what about his defensive ability, and that's where Kyle Walker was fantastic today, he won every challenge for me that he was in, he hardly got beaten, I can't remember him getting beaten down that flank, and I'll just remember that standout moment where him and Pickford got in a little... It wasn't uh, kind of a miscommunication there. Uh, Kyle Walker thought Pickford was coming out. It was a late ball into the box. End of the game, a cross came in. And it was Kyle Walker and Perisic. And Kyle Walker wasn't sure if Pickford were coming out. And it was kind of a weird ball where it, where it landed. And Kyle Walker was somehow able to guard off Perisic and bully him and protect the ball and let Pickford grab it late. Even with miscommunication, Kyle Walker, for me, he showed a great leadership today. Great defending. Even though he was god awful going forward for me and his passing ability he was piss poor, he was still unbelievable defensive wise, and that's what you need against a team like Croatia when you're gonna have to sit back in games like this. And people will probably have been saying, Why didn't Reese James start? This is the reason why. Kyle Walker brings his experience, his leadership, his game and big game mentality, and he showed it here, guys, and his defensive ability was unbelievable. Guys, I just put up I, I hate talking about the stats and you guys not seeing them, so I've been able to do this, and I hope you guys like this aspect. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. But I just love you guys being able to see the stats too because I hate talking about them and you guys not actually seeing them. So they're right there, guys. Obviously, it was a very, very tight game, very even. Basically, 50-50 possession. Eight shots, eight shots for each side, and two shots on target with each team having a corner. These, these stats are really... You can't really make them apart. They're pretty well even in such a tight game here i'm gonna scroll down to the lineups guys for the england lineup i was there was two positions that really two or three positions that really struck me out here left back i'm obviously a united supporter i couldn't believe luke shaw did not make this lineup i couldn't believe ben Chilwell didn't make this lineup and this is coming from a guy that absolutely hates ben Chilwell. and why am i not surprised that kieran trippier made this left back spot I didn't think Kieran Trippier was that great. I thought he was okay for right back. He's playing left back. Yes, he can play left back, but yes, he put in a shift. But he's only there for his free kick abilities, or as uh, Southgate likes to call it, he's 
he's able to be flexible to play more than one position, which I hate that flexibility BS. You should play to your strengths and play the best you have in that position, which is Luke Shaw or Ben Chilwell, and he didn't do it. But England still got the win in the biggest game in the group, which is massive. I hope he starts to play left backs there and not Trippier every game because I do not rate Trippier at left back, and this needs to change for England going forward if they're going to win the tournament for me. Also, I want to talk about those two defensive midfielders before I move on to my other changes I'd make. Phillips and Rice, absolutely outstanding. If you were give, I said to uh, you know, my to my friends in our group chat, I said ten minutes in, I said Phillips has been my man of the match and he's gonna be my man of the match. I don't care what's gonna happen or what's changing. Phillips is already man of the match, and it was like eight minutes in, I said this. Already, he made that unbelievable volley. He, I can't remember. He brought the ball down from about twenty feet. And unbelievable touch, and I think he dribbled it around two or three Croatian players, then just played it back to Tyrone Mings or John Stones. His control in the midfield today was outstanding. The shift he put in, he was just an engine, a workhorse. The guy didn't stop running. I'm obviously a United fan, like I've said. We all know Philip played for Leeds. My One of my best friends is a Leeds supporter. He's from Leeds. He's been hounding me all season how good Phillips is and saying he should be starting. And I said, I don't think he should be starting. But for me, this game absolutely proved to me that he was right and that Phillips is the player that everyone says he is or Leeds fans says he is. I would take him at United. I'd take him at a top club just from that game. He was better than Declan Rice for me in that game. He was... One of the best, that was one of the best defensive midfielder performances I've seen all year besides content Champions League final for me. Yes, you could say it's the first game of the tournament for England, but he was unbelievable, guys. What he did in that midfield cannot be disputed, and I hope it doesn't get downplayed. And if somebody else gets mad in the match, it's a highway robbery because what Phillips did today was outstanding. And no, no, I, if he if he does that again next game, and he does that game after and the game after, and beside Declan Rice, this this midfield is going to be tough to get around for opponent sides like France or like Portugal or teams like that. And Phillips is really going to be the t- player of the tournament, really. He could be for me. And that's me saying it after one game. But the other two changes I'd make are... Probably, I would have easily taken Raheem Sterling out of this for Jack Grealish. You could say he, Sterling still scored. But that was, I also didn't talk about Phillips' unbelievable assist, guys. The, the assist Phillips gave for Sterling was out of this world. But he really set up Sterling on a plate, and I couldn't believe Sterling scored that. The Livakovic made an absolute horror show there. Yes, it could have gotten deflected, but Sterling put it straight down the middle, straight at Livakovic, and Livakovic couldn't keep it out. But... Still, Sterling scored. He put them back in that and fair play. But I'd be having Jack Rulis start ahead of Sterling every day of the week. Jack Rulis is one of the best players in that position in the world for me. And I think if he gets the chance to show it in this tournament, he will show why he is talked about so much around the world. And the other position I want to talk about is why the heck wasn't Jaden Sancho in this team? Why wasn't Jaden Sancho on the freaking bench? Jaden Sancho didn't even make the bench today for England. And that is absolutely stupid. I can't I can't tell you his, stand, uh, his stats this year, but I know it's absolutely ridiculous. He's being talked about going to Manchester United for $80 million. Maybe there's something underlying here that maybe Jaden Sancho went to go get this deal sorted with United in the today, tomorrow, or something and get this done with. But the fact that Gareth Southgate left him out is very suspicious and very stupid this just for me shows that England managers or the England bias to the Premier League yes you could say Bellingham came on but Sancho should be starting this lineup all day for me I would have played Foden down the middle I think Foden got left out of the play a lot you saw him get really quiet in most of the game besides his little play there and I would have loved to see Foden in the middle, creating everything with him, Grealish, and Sancho right behind Kane. You wouldn't have had a better front four than that in the tournament, guys. And I hope, and I really hope, Sancho, there's a reason for Sancho not being on the bench. Because it is absolutely stupid that the likes of Bukayo Saka made the bench over Sancho. Or Connor Cody made the bench over Sancho. I would have even taken the likes of Bellingham off and put Sancho on. The bench, but it, it's absolutely ridiculous. But I want to say fair play to England. They were absolutely fantastic today in what they had to do. They got over the line. They weren't brilliant, but they still played defensive football. Like I said to you guys, England probably would in my podcast with my two buddies on football and football. If you guys want to check that out, 
But guys, England were fantastic. I, I am very happy they got this one over the line. I think, for me, if they don't be... Scotland's the, the little banana peel, the slip up here that we could see. Czech Republic, I see England beating them quite comfortably. 3-0, 3-1, 4-0, something like that. And the Scotland game... That's going to be your tight one. It's going to be a 2-1, uh, one nothing, something like that. That's that's a real banana peel here, guys. Scotland's going to be a fun game. We got Scotland playing Czech Republic right away here. I'm going to probably do a match reaction for that one. I'll see. But, guys, this England game was well-deserved for England to win this. Croatia did not really scare me at all in this game. Pickford scared me the most on a couple of the clearances. But, guys, I'd have to say it was a fun game. I'm going to pop up Phillips' stats here. There's my man in the match, Calvin Phillips. 93.9% passing accuracy is unbelievable for a defensive midfielder. And he gave away only one foul, or three fouls, my bad, and he won one foul. That's outstanding for a defensive midfielder, guys. But guys, I'd have to say England's performance is top-notch, and it proves to me that I still feel it's coming home. But Southgate's got a lot to prove to me with some lineup change changes and some tactical adjustments if it really is going to come home guys but guys hit that sub button hit the like button it means a lot to me it means the world and it helps my channel a whole bunch but guys hit the comments let me know what you thought of this game and we'll be back for another one right after this peace guys